In this module, you will learn about stakeholder engagement in the ELD process, the rationale behind stakeholder engagements, the steps involved in stakeholder engagement, the use of scenarios to inform political decision making, and some notes on policy briefs, key messages, and recommendations for policy impact. Further information on these topics is provided in the script or the practitioner's guide, and links are provided at the end of this presentation, including a tutorial on how to develop a policy brief. Why do we need to engage stakeholders? It's clear there's an urgent need for action to reverse land degradation. The complexity of the challenges requires collaboration between stakeholders at different levels, that is, between scientists, technical advisors, local communities, governmental administrations at the local, regional and national level, private companies and NGOs. Engaging these stakeholders into the process of an ELD study helps to identify suitable options and the pathways to action. Often framework conditions have to change to allow for sustainable transformation of agricultural practices. Some definitions. When we talk about stakeholders, we mean those who are affected by or who can affect a decision or an issue. Stakeholder engagement means a process where individuals, groups and organizations choose to take an active role in making decisions that affect them. How do we engage stakeholders? The ELD Initiative's Practitioner's Guides explain a variety of techniques to involve stakeholders into the studies and action regarding sustainable land management. It is based on Kolb's experimental learning cycle. The three steps of stakeholder engagement mentioned earlier involve planning, setting goals, identifying, categorizing and selecting stakeholders, designing the engagement process and planning activities. Secondly, acting, using engagement tools and facilitating engagement. And thirdly, a reflection phase, which monitors and evaluates stakeholder engagement. The first step is the plan, identifying goals and stakeholders. This involves goal setting within the inception phase. What shall be the outcome of the research process? And the effective goals are often said to be SMART, S-M-A-R-T, as defined in the slide. Suitable questions to identify stakeholders are included in the list shown on the slide. Typical stakeholders include the land users, government agencies, the private sector, civil society, media and research and academic organizations. An example of a tool that we use to identify goals and stakeholders is shown in the figure, which is an example of an interest versus influence matrix. On the y-axis, you will see a level of interest from low to high, and on the x-axis is a level of influence from low to high. And we tend to want to aim for the right hand, upper right hand quadrant. Designing the stakeholder engagement process. An engagement process is a process through which the identified stakeholders have an opportunity to discuss and provide their perspective over possible options and pathways for actions before decisions are made. The process enables stakeholders to address current land issues affecting them through 1. Identifying more sustainable alternative land management practices and 2 identifying suitable pathways to establish alternative land management practices. Continuing with the design of the stakeholder processes, there are many different approaches that can help guide the way you design the process. 
two commonly used and complementary techniques are shown in the slide. More information on these and others is found in the practitioner's guide. One of the main components of a stakeholder engagement plan is the identification of the necessary levels of engagement for each stakeholder. There are four possibilities for engagement. One is simply inform, which is the most basic level of engagement. Consult, where specific questions are asked but stakeholders do not participate in discussion or interaction. Three, involve, more opportunity for discussion under this option. And finally, collaborate, involved where all stakeholders are involved to some extent in full decision making. This slide illustrates the range of stakeholder engagement tools. You can find more details on these tools in the script. The facilitation of the engagement process is a key part. Intensive stakeholder engagement process often require highly skilled facilitation to ensure equal participation from all those involved. The slide shows why we need a facilitator, facilitator and also indicates the skills needed in the facilitator. The third phase of the engagement processes involves a reflection the monitoring and evaluation of stakeholder engagement. Here we need to decide what you need to monitor and evaluate by asking questions such as, do you want to monitor and evaluate the process or the outcomes of the process? Do you want to carry out the monitoring and evaluation with or without participation from those who are meant to benefit from engagement? And do you want to take formative or summative approaches? We require indicators because indicators are a powerful tool to monitor progress and evaluate your process and outcomes. A good indicator will provide you with cost-effective, timely and accurate information with minimum effort. We recall that indicators also need to be smart, that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. In the context of land degradation, it may be useful to identify indicators for social, economic, and environmental outcomes. Examples of these indicators include conceptual outcomes, that is changes in understanding and new ways of thinking, instrumental outcomes, which are better quality decisions leading to improvement in ecological health, capacity building outcomes, which means new skills and access to new resources, and social outcomes, the empowerment and ownership of the engagement process and its outcomes. It also involves increased equality between participants. This figure gives examples of indicators used in a project where soil erosion was being monitored and reversed. The indicators used appear in the white boxes. This table shows an example of indicators used in a combined outcome and process based evaluation, in this case of soil wind erosion control methods. The indicators are listed under the success criteria and measurements. Here we consider the use of scenarios to inform political decision making. A thorough understanding of the economic drivers of land degradation, stakeholder needs and suitable sustainable land management practices can support better decision making. The ELD approach allows the stakeholders to compare the trade-offs of alternative future options or scenarios, that is comparing a business as usual scenario with an action scenario. Economic values are used as objective metrics to show losses and benefits. This leads to awareness on the value of nature and the economic losses that result from land degradation. The benefits of action, that is the investments in sustainable land management, are shown in the scenarios.
The ELD studies aim to produce policy briefs with key messages and recommendations for policy impact. This enables creating awareness and bringing soil and land degradation issues onto the national political agenda. And this is crucial to achieve a sustainable impact. Policymakers need to understand the importance of addressing land degradation and how they can take action to prevent it. A policy brief presents a research project's results and the implications to political decision makers. We develop this further by the links below, which include a tutorial on how to develop a policy brief. The tutorial on how to develop a policy brief includes what to consider before starting. That means identifying the national barriers that can hinder land and soil issues from becoming policy. It includes specifying the policy audience that should be reached. And it includes defining the focus and purpose of your policy brief. The ELD initiative has developed a handout on how to develop a policy brief outlining the, the structure, which should include an executive summary, an introduction, brief method and results description, a conclusion and the implications and options. The layout of a policy brief should lead to the highlighting of the most important parts. The brief should cover between no more than two to four pages. Titles provide a reference point and subtitles break up the text and should entice readers. Verbs should make titles and subtitles more active or ask questions. And attention can be drawn through call outs, sidebars and bullet lists. You can test or try out your policy brief by asking the following questions. Test it on your colleagues, family or friends asking them how it could be made more user-friendly. You can ask, is it full of buzzwords and jargon, or is it for anyone to understand? Have you blinded them with statistics? Further in information and recommended reading can be found in the links on this slide. If you have questions or require further information, please visit the two links shown on this slide.